Welcome back to WWE 2K22 My GM Mode. It is time for our first premium live event. I am trailing by about 30,000 or so fans. I have quite the budget to spend on match types when you consider how close these ratings are, but when you also consider that Regal's budget is not there to really put on banger after banger with those amounts of money that he has in his war chest. I do have a power card. It is plus 15 to one superstar after their next match. So that was the cost of not booking my champions last time on this show. So the question is, who does it go to? Because you want somebody who is a permanent roster member, and the only real option here is going to be Xavier Woods. Because everybody else has weeks remaining on their deals, but Xavier was in my draft picks, and therefore 54 plus 15 for Mr. Woods to the moon. Now, do we sign anybody, or do we... Well, let's book the show first. Let's see if we can, we can book first on this program. Is there a Ensure Kushida Fights? Easy. He's fighting for those tag team titles. That one, simple game. Thank you for not making it overly complicated. But also, we must go to WrestleMania Backlash on that deal. And also, spend that money on better stage, better road crew, better lighting effects, and of course advertising some uh, viral campaigns. So we're already at almost 100 grand on just those things at all. Like, wow. So, main event we know for that world. Heavyweight title, it's going to be Drew. It's going to be Randy. It's going to be hell in a cell. They have the stamina to do it, and it's going to be for that title. This better be five stars. I'm saying right now, it better be five stars. Like, good lord. Now, we also have our women's championship, and that, I think, should open the show. So you want a hot opener and a hot closer. So we're going to open with Bianca challenging Asuka. It's going to be an Extreme Rules matchup, and it's going to be for that women's title. Okay, now, we also have our tag team titles. So Kofi and Xavier who are at 80 and 100, defending against Kushida and Chad Gable, who are at 81 and 79, and they'll be in a tables match, because that gives me a branded pay-per-view bonus, and yes, for those titles. I'm telling you, I'm going all out on this show. If I don't beat Regal this week, will I ever? Will I ever? We also have the ongoing feud between Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. They can have a tables match, sure. Again, if it's five grand, why not? So we're going all out. If we can, we're at 160 on the show cost. It's going to be a costly, costly card. Now, what is left to book? Who is still even worth doing? Well, of course, it's going to be Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe and... Do we keep on getting that bonus? Is it tables, tables, tables? Because that sounds okay to me. Even if they're both at 44 in their stamina, they're not on long-term deals if they get hurt. It's kind of whatever. Now, we have four promos to book. We got John Cena. He's got two weeks left. What can he do? So he can role change advertising. So advertising gets you extra money but lowers his popularity if he is performing poorly, Charity gets a bonus of fans with, with a chance of a small boost to his popularity, and uh, yes, self-promo is just increasing or lowering his popularity. We'll do a Charity promo from John Cena. So again, that should hopefully pop him up there and cost us 10 grand, but get us more fans, and again, I want to beat William Regal at least one week of these 15 weeks, because good lord, it's been ridiculous. So what else can even be done here. Well, we can take Beth Phoenix and turn her heel, as long as she's still here, why not? So then Beth and Trish should work out there between their two different styles. Um, we can self-promo for Trish, 
And we got one last spot opened up here and nobody really, I don't want to put a jobber doing a promo because why would you? Why would you? So honestly, I'm going to leave that first spot empty. I think the show in and of itself here is pretty strong and it's costing me 187 grand to do in the first place. That's kind of a lot. It's kind of a lot. It's like half of what I had when I started this whole thing in the first place, but hey. But hey, we've done our best to do what we do. And at this juncture, I can't imagine it would lose to Regal, but I'm willing to be surprised by it and we'll see how things play out. So, all of that being said, let's confirm this show. Very costly. Very costly. So, confirming the booking. Hopefully it makes some good cash for me and I get returns on this investment for Backlash. Now, Extreme Rules, Bianca versus The Empress, the rematch. Simulate. Two. Three. And no, Asuka still dominant. Four stars. Hot opener. Level three on their feud. Love it. Mid card. Tables match. Joe and Lesnar. What do we get? And it is Brock Lesnar beating Joe and three stars. Okay. Trish Stratus. Self promo. Excellent. Plus six on her popularity. And in this one, we shall spectate. So Owens and Balor, here we go. I need someone different for the thumbnail as we head into this premium live event. Fight, Owens, fight. How about unblocking me on Twitter? That'd be nice. Not gonna happen, but what you gonna do, right? What you gonna do? I've already told that story on this channel before. Anyhow, let's go. Bring me that Balor Club for that thumbnail. Back to being a heel, back to leading a faction. It is indeed the Prince. Balor Club is for everyone, but can he put Kevin Owens through a table on this show and continue this feud in a positive, highly rated fashion? That's the question. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. What do we got? All right, Balor. Get to the ring. Here we go. I got I got my thumbnail. We're good. So, it is non-title, obviously, but a hotly contested feud. And are we going to see an accidental win like Joe got against Lesnar? Nice suplex from Balor to open it up. The way tables can break in these games... Uh, it could certainly be an accident and win in that fashion. But yes, I went tables, 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 because they are the bonus, and they were the cheapest to make happen. Nice top rope drop kick from KO. But will that be enough? The stump puller from Owens. Can he soften up Balor and put him crashing through some hardware code breaker from his ex-best friend, Chris Jericho. Imagine that. Why was his name on that list? Balor, though, fighting back. Hammer throw to the outside and the stunner to Owens. Picturesque. The irony is not lost on me. So, into... Whoa, nope, I thought perhaps into the other announce table, but no. Instead, Owens carrying Balor not very far, but carrying him towards... Oh, there's... The, like, you don't have finish, either man. There's no finish for either of you, so you can't use the announce table spot to use that table. And now Owens, first one to a table, and Balor off at the pass there. Cuts him off, and that one just... Whoop, 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 whoop. Where's it going? And Owens thought wisely of it. Getting that table for that table spot for that win here on pay-per-view. So now we have dueling tables, or not, and Balor clunking him and just dropping it for no reason that I can figure out and just going to town here on Owens. Now, funny enough, 
Both men wearing a very similar color scheme of the red, white, and black. Pele kick to Kevin Owens. Owens with the table, putting it into the corner. Balor is stumbling to his feet. And both men have signature. So a nice DDT there from KO. But both men have SIG. Both men can definitely make it happen at any given time. Into the table goes Balor. Owens. Owens. The powerbomb. The powerbomb winner. Fight Owens fight. That was certainly a back and forth contest. And we get a three and a half star great. Great. Take that, William Regal. We'll see how you compete on this show. Now, a role change for Miss Beth Phoenix. Back to being a heel. Excellent, because she should be a heel. The Glamazon, we know. Mid-card, we have a tables match for those tag team titles. What do we have? We just re-signed Chad Gable, and now Gable and Kushida, your tag team champions your tag team champions in a three-star endeavor. John Cena, charity promo. Excellent, because it's John Cena. And finally, Drew, Randy, one more time. Hell in a cell. Five stars, five stars, five stars. Five time, five time, five time. Drew is still champion. Five stars. Take that, William Regal. The King Booker! Okay, so now I know that the top star, the most popular star on SmackDown is Becky Lynch, because she is not on this card. So, Walter, Swerve, normal, match, opening the show. Gunta, and he loses to Swerve. Skr, skr! Four stars for that matchup. Hot opener. A charity promo from a heel, Miss Mandy Rose. It was okay. Not as good as John Cena. Hell in a Cell, Natalia Alexa in your mid card. And it is. Natalia, victorious. Four stars, somehow, some way. Charity Otis. Again, a heel doing charity excellent for Otis. That man just cuts promos. Titus, MVP, in the mid-card. Regular, regular. It is MVP. And that is a two-star mediocre match. And here might be, possibly, an injury to Dakota Kai from Nobody Mina than Tamina. It is Dakota Kai winning, but at what cost? Three stars. And your main event. The SmackDown, wait, so you don't have a world title match on your card because your world champion, Happy Corbin, is in this feud here in a tag team for those tag team titles. Will it be Baron Two Belts? That's the question. What do we have? A regular standard match. It is still tag team champions, three and a half stars in that match. So did I win the show? Uh, or did it? Yeah, all right. Amazing booking. So we did that, and it looks like nobody got hurt, which is great. Uh, over on SmackDown, no injuries, so they ended up doing pretty well as well. Uh, and they finished some of their... So that's how you do it ideally. You finish those rivalries on the grand stage. And they finished one between Walter and Swerve, and they finished one between... Dakota, and Tamina. The question is, I got a 131. I gained 235,000 fans and made 44 grand in profit on that show. I thought I did pretty good. Now, did I beat SmackDown? Well, we're going to find out. Between a 131 and 235 on our deal there, SmackDown. Are you better than 131 and 235 in a fan change? 102! 179! I finally won a week. It all paid off on pay-per-view premium live event. Oh, good lord. 
I actually managed to beat Regal for a week here on week five. Can I continue those deals right now? I think with that one show, I am now number one. I beat Regal. I am now number one by about 30,000 fans. I was down 30,000, went even, and then went up. So I gained 60K over Regal with that amazing performance on pay per view. Ah, <sighs> four weeks until TLC. Kushida's deal is up. Kushida is tag team champion. I can't have him leave with the belt like Alundra Blaze. So 73K, yes, uh, we'll do it. I'll pay the man. He's champ. Don't hold me up. Increasing his morale. John Cena's deal is up. He cuts great promos and matches occasionally. And he wants 98K. Do you underpay John Cena or you pay what John Cena is worth because he's John Cena? So there we go. Spending money, doing that. Timbers, I don't care. Like, I've helped him out, but no. Uh, how about 8,000, Lumberjack? He took the deal. He did. Okay, Lesnar's stamina below 40. Rest him up, the beast. I know. I'll do it. Wait, I see Tamina in here. Hmm, nobody Mina. So, all right, yes. Bianca Belair got her rematch. Didn't win, but she got it. So she appreciates getting that rematch. And yes, that's on her. It happens. Still the EST. So, all right. Hey, Attack Slug. I'm sick of Regal on SmackDown. I lost to Dakota on pay-per-view. Uh, what's your offer? What's your offer, Tamina? So, at a discount. What is your discount? 86k to sign with Raw. I don't need Tamina. I just got Beth Phoenix and Trish Stratus. So, I'm good. Sorry, Tamina. Not gonna happen. Go work Ring of Honor and or find your loss. And or AW and or the Indies. Whatever. Okay, so I have 150k now. Let's go check on the everything else. Everything else. So I got one power card here for free advertising. But the ratings. Look at me shoot past William Regal. But also the money. We're getting almost even and it's going to be harder and harder to make enough to sign new permanent talent. I can't afford at this point anybody who wants more than 150 grand. So, you know, when it comes to free agents, these are all on a week to week basis because nobody has permanent deals at this point. But over in the legend, this is kind of the set yard. Stone Cold no longer available. Did William Regal sign stunning Steve Austin? Does that happen from their days in WCW? Maybe. We'll find out. I guess I could sign Vince here for, for 10 weeks, but no. Uh, I can't afford Vince at this point for 10 weeks. In any event, we did that. That was our week here. And I'm a tax slug. I'll see you next time. We are not done here with GM mode. We have 10 more weeks to go. But I'll see you then. I'll see you next time. I'll see you here for more videos. And I'm out.